What's going on, everyone? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me today. Um, hopefully, you guys had a, a really good new year so far. Um, I didn't intend on doing a particular video today because um, I figured I'd call myself getting some rest, but that's not going to happen. It's way too cold to fall asleep. In fact, I don't think <laughs> it has never been this cold in North Carolina before. I promise you. It was never this cold when Barack Obama was president. <laughs> it's just too cold. So I can't rest and uh, recharge my battery that way. So what I started to do is try different things or new things for myself. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, I was posting an instrumental I did in, on New Year's Eve. And as the night kind of accelerated, I started thinking of words and stuff and kind of had the idea that probably I could turn it into a song if I spent some time on it because it's in a different cadence, a different tempo. It's way different than the typical hip hop stuff, which you could just freestyle to. This will have to be a song per se. But the reason why I have it in reason right now and I made an FL studio is because I ran into that problem again. Like I started adding things in FL studio and I got it all worked out and I was like, I hear something and I don't like it. So I wanted to see if there's really, you know, a benefit to the new SSL mixer and Reason outside of the context of using Reason sounds and see how it would influence that mix. Would it would I would I hear a difference? Would it matter? I could play it against the FL bounce and kind of compare and contrast the two. So that was my own personal experiment. Also, um, because it's something I typically do in Harrison Mix Bus, I could probably shoot that out as well. So what I did was I exported all the tracks out of FL Studio using export split mixers. And when I imported it, of course, Reason has to create an audio rack for each sound, like an ADAT. And you notice I have all these daggone tracks now. So that was new. <laughs> and then you had to rename and color them. And that wasn't as fun as it looks when you really think about it. Um, I always click the wrong button. Let me get this fixed. Bruh, come on now. Boom. So it doesn't look like a lot. And what you should do normally is use the slice tool and cut out the air gaps. But since the SSL has a gate on it, I'm just going to use the gate instead. I know I've had people ask me about that. I think the, the homie M. Reese. But this particular track, and I'll play it for you. Um, what inspired me to do this was um, one of the homies that left the comment on my YouTube video on two or three videos again, two or three videos ago. His name was Yish. Y-I-S-H. And he also has a YouTube channel, and every once in a while, he'll throw up a VSC review. In fact, around the time I was looking up the Acoustica stuff, looking for demos and reviews, I think he was one of the only people doing them. And um, so when I listened to that particular review he did a few months ago, um, the song he used for his review just kind of stood out to me. It just really bothered me how good it was. <laughs> it was like, why isn't this a song? Who is this artist? And if you go to his channel, Yish In Your Ear, and you look at that video and you see the comments, everyone's wondering the same thing. So I remember a few months ago when I asked him that, he said, oh yeah, it's an uh, artist I'm working on. We'll um, probably finish it later, right? And then when New Year's came, I thought about him again because he left those comments, and I went back to that to listen to it again. And when I listened to it again, I think my comment was gone or just buried. So I left another comment. I said, I ain't forget, finish that song. And he didn't respond to it. So I said, all right, I want to finish it for you. <laughs> so I played his YouTube of that particular clip and I sampled it into the sample track, put it into lo-fi. And then because Yish was programming, because I think he does his guitar in FL Studio, um, his guitar sounds, and he switched keys on me. So I was following along with players and reason and it just threw my mind off. I was like, I ain't got time for a key switch because the players are locked you into a key, right? So I was like, I could just draw around it. You can't fool me. So I did the melody, the counter melody, the bass, the 808s, blah, 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 blah. The whole track's on my Instagram, and I guess the track will be in this video too as I mix through it. But um, he's just such a, a talented person, man. And hopefully he watches my new videos or he sees this video. I'm gonna put his name in the title. Um, and I just want him to know how talented he is because I think he's an older, older cat, and I know a lot of the super talented people um, usually play the background because of life. And I guess that's a bigger mes message in this video is that you don't ever have to play the background as long as you're alive. Like there's a, there's a story that they call, it's a biblical story, 
whether you're into that or not. But it's a very important story about talent. And um, I've seen different variations of it in different contexts. And this will make me think of it today. Is how, like, you can have three people and someone, like a king or someone, can give them each a brick of gold. And you can kind of just watch them do something different. Some have this fear mechanism where they just bury it to keep it safe because they fear the responsibility of being reckless and being someone being mad at them for not making something, you know, losing it or wasting it away. Then you have another person who's conservative. You know, they save a little here, spend a little there and try to make things happen on a budget. And then you have the other person that just went all in. And um, because they went all in with the focus, energy, attention and that hustle, much, much more came back to them. So then when the person comes back who fronted them the gold, the loan, the talent, and this is a universal thing, it's more about your talent, literally. Um, certain The people who are more conservative or more scary had their talents taken away from them. And then those talents then got poured into the person who bet all in on it. So that's when you like listen to like Will Smith and Denzel Washington and some of these actors and athletes, when they ask them these questions about their mentality, you'll notice they're all in. There's no plan A. Even like Will Smith, it's a very important video where he's talking about, you know, you might be better at me at this, 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 and a third, right? But if me and you get on a treadmill, I will always win. And the person was like, why would you always win? You know, there's faster runners. He was like, none of that matters in my mind. What matters is I am not going to stop running until you die or I die. He said that in a very simple way, like he's an animal. He'll just run. But he didn't mean that. The nuance of what he was saying was, is that I will outwork you every time. Like it's not over until I say it's over or until I can't go no more. And that's that full circle into the story of the talents. It's that you're not supposed to hide it. You're not supposed to be conservative. You're supposed to bet all in. And unfortunately, I kind of tied this to Yish for some reason. I don't know nothing about this man's business. I'm just doing it on the pure appearances of the video, how, how talented this man is, the fact that he's hiding the fact that he's an artist when it's apparently his voice singing, and the fact that all these comments he had of wanting to hear the finished song, and he hasn't yet delivered it, and it's been months. And then it takes a guy like me to sample into a sample track and make a whole new beat out of it and potentially a whole nother song. So um, I th <laughs> it's all tied together somewhere in my brain. But I just want you guys to know that too. Like, if you're if you're hesitating on pulling the trigger, don't. Um, like I said, I'm not a legal advice. I'm not a guidance counselor. I'm not going to be the one to tell you about life decisions because there's timing principles that only you can judge. But I know Plan B and Plan C doesn't make sense on any aspect of life. And I, I hate that I'm getting this deep. Like I said, I didn't plan a technical video today. I think you, so a lot of people just don't come with the terms that they're going to die. I think that's what's different about me than most other people. I, I fully realize I'm going to die. And because of that, I don't have the same hangups about certain things. Like, I'm not completely fearless, like 50 Cent or those kind of guys. I'm still conservative with certain decision making. But I just know I'm going to die. And because of that, nothing else matters. Nothing. It doesn't matter if I didn't achieve this. It doesn't matter if I didn't achieve that. It doesn't matter if this person knows, that person knows, how much money was in the bank, how much money I could have made. None of that matters. I'm just going to die. So knowing that, every day should be about what um, gives me life instead of death, right? Um, work, working those 15-hour overtime shifts and working those dead-end jobs, working in fast food, remembering those one hour, like our parents used to say, one hour, uh, we used to go to school up up, up and down the hill, both directions or something. You, me, literally, especially in North Carolina, walking to work, walking back, an hour, both directions, um, being beat, being tired all the time, and just how miserable that experience was in reality, but mentally, that gave me all the time I needed to study and listen to audiobooks and plot and strategize and um, understand things on a, on a macro. And um, it helped me a whole lot because of our breathing and stuff. I don't want to get too deep. I used to uh, practice a, a certain type of breathing technique when I used to walk that long so I didn't get tired so fast because I'm a big guy. I'm like 6'4", 3'30", 340. So um, it just helped, and it actually affects your thinking too. It's like a meditation. So 
just all of that adding up and, and realizing how short life is and how much is wasted on those moments. And you, you shouldn't ever feel like at any point in life where you owe someone an explanation to why you have a plan A and why you want to go all in because you get buried by yourself. So when, it th- when I think of Yish, when I think of Tommy D, when I think of some of the other people, Nas 550s and all these guys who have this tremendous amount of talent in my eyes, I go, you guys could do so much more and offer so much more. But then I understand why they don't because of everything else, the walking to work, both directions, the, the one hour, the 18 hours out of your day from being obligated to something else. And if one day I can convince everybody, you know, or at least get this across to you guys, is that you can crack that too. You, none of that is permanent. Like, none of it. Like, <laughs> like even w- when we look at music, right, the golden era wasn't permanent. You know, you know how many people were fed, how many people ate, how, how crazy the music industry was for inner city people, people who've never had it before. How, how quick and clean of a come up that was, how efficient that was for laundering money, how efficient that was for people to move around states and make new connections. Like all of that was a very short moment and it, it pretty much died. It's the same way with Trap. Trap came out of nowhere. It's isolated to this particular region and it's bubbling and they're making millionaires and billionaires in that region due to tourism and the law of attraction of people wanting to be there. But soon that'll die too. And that's why like people like me is kind of see like, all right, we know there's a calendar, there's a season, there's a recession for these kind of moments. What's next? And, you know, I'll, I'll place a bet on lo-fi and I'll play, place a bet on something else and see if it manifests. But your whole life is like that. So if you, if you find yourself very unhappy in something that seems indefinite, so I'm not talking about school. School is more like two years here, four years there. You know there's a definite end to it. So, so you're going to grind in the meantime. But I mean like dead-end jobs, dead-end people, dead-end uh, thinking, you know, dead-end religions maybe. Uh, that's kind of weird. Uh, dead-end, you know, uh, relationships with mom and dad. It changes the moment you let it go. Sometimes you just got to let shit go. Like, you just got to let it go. You just... You got to make moves. And I know, like I said, like the story of the talent, sometimes we got to be that person B who, who, who didn't just go all in and just say, forget this job. I'm out of here. Peace. You know, we're not pulling a half baked, but you can pull something similar. You can grind in that moment and use every ounce of free time that you have outside of that job, looking for the next one, making that next beat, writing that next song, coding that next app, whatever you need to do. And what I find in myself and in others, commonly in others, that so many people know that already. However, they're not executing. So they stay in this indefinite cycle of plan B's and plan C's because their free time is designated for sleep and rest in the hope that maybe one day um, it'll fix itself and it never has, never will. No one's gonna come along and discover your talent if you're not working with your talent. Like if you're an extraordinary person and a perfect personality and you're in a drive through window, the only thing you're gonna to convince to the people who could help you is that you're great customer service and they're gonna come back to that restaurant next week. You're not gonna convince them of your hidden latent buried talents by being in the wrong place at the right time is what I'm trying to say. You have to be you have to be caught doing what you love at some point in your cycle of your season of of your life. You have to be someone has to catch you actually dealing with the talent that you're given. This message ain't for everybody. I know that. Some people are more practical, some people are different kind of thinkers. So uh their life path it might there might be a different rhythm. So a lot of this may not make sense. But for those of you who this falls on your ears and it makes sense to you I'm telling you, there's nothing to wait for. It's as easy as you making the decision that you want something else. You work towards that. You initiate the change. People in your life are going to start acting funny, common behavior. Um, Different things in business or finances might get kind of funny. Been there. Um, A lot of things will start getting unsettled like an earthquake. The ground will start moving. But you have to, like Will Smith said, no matter what. I'm running this road. 
I'm running on this treadmill and you're not going to beat me. And then once that momentum sees you're not going to be shaken by it, it stops. And then all of a sudden you're in this, you're in this uh, CeeLo Green described it best on that song Crazy. I'm Narles Barkley. He said, I remember when. I remember that time when he lost his mind. I felt something so pleasant about that space. Even your emotions have to let go in so much space. So basically what he was saying is you arrive to yourself, basically. You, you, you have self-realization of who you are. And all the voices, the emptiness he's describing is all the voices you get from growing up. Like, you have to do it this way. You have to go to school. You have to get a 401k. You have to do this. Marry the girl. Marry the guy. This, All those voices, once you get to a place where it's like none of that's no longer in your personality or in your mental and you divorce it all, you realize how still and silent your consciousness really is. All those other voices are external, although they might reverberate inside of our brain. And people call that crazy. <laughs> I think that was the message of the song to a large extent. Like when, you, when you're self-realized, you look crazy. You sound crazy because you don't sound like no one else anymore because you're not influenced by those things. So the rest of the world who may not be self-realized as you or recognize that in you, they'll go, something's wrong with him. He does things different or she or her. You know, it's like, it's because that's true. Maybe I am crazy. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> it's one of those things. Um, and I think creatives and why I, why my mind brought it to this particular platform just now is because creative people might deal with this a little bit more exaggerated than other personality types because we already think outside the box. The problem is when we think outside the box, other people try to push us back in. So hopefully that helps you guys. As far as this tutorial goes, I think that was just a setup. I honestly don't think I was supposed to show you this yet. Um, I just want to give a salute to, to Yish, though. I'm going to play you the FL Studio version instead. That's what I'll do because it's already together and these levels are mixed, messed up. They're not ready. Hopefully this doesn't mess up the tracking on my video. I have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> I promise you I didn't plan to say any of that. That was just off the cuff. Oh, man, come on and load. So I can let you guys go and enjoy the new year, January 1st style. I'm going to play this. So, yeah, so so let me play the Yish sample just so you can hear Yish and his guitar playing and his voice. And um, I'm putting it in edit so I can play it in Edison. Where am I silenced at? Right here. And this is recorded from his YouTube into my sample track back in the FL studio. And in his tutorial video, he's looping that as he uses the Acoustica plugins. Um, and he never finished it. And it's just ridiculous to a person like me because I recognize something in that. But I'm going to play you my version. I added everything. Like I said, FL Studio last night, Instagram. Um, there's a lead at the end. That's the only standout thing is that I was using FL Studio Harmer. I was looking for another sound and I couldn't find it in Silent or Serum because those are the only two VSCs I have left installed. So I used Harmer for the first time. And since I have producer edition, it's a demo. So I record all the demo stuff into Edison as an audio clip. You know, think smart, not, not hard. <laughs> and, uh, save $100 while you're at it. And then <laughs> the rest of these are chords and stuff. And, you know, I got my Melodyne hacks. I got my piano roll hacks. I got all kind of hacks popping to make sure that I follow the lead of his tune. So. Um, Yish, if this is you when you see this video, can you confirm that for me so we can talk about distribution splits? But if it's not you and it is really another artist, who who are they? Like, we need to talk. But I know it's you. You can't get over on me. So let's end on this note. Let's play what I got in FL and see what happens.
if you follow my channel, you already know what's about to happen. So yeah, <laughs> that's that. Um, such a random moment, all of it. Um, even the, the whole sampling his uh, tutorial type thing. Don't do that. I normally don't. I just, no one does. <laughs> but, but I had to. And I think it inspired the message, which was probably more important. But yeah, I, I got it out of FL into Reason because of that experimentation. I wanted to see if I can make it sound better than that. And in, in case I did want to lay some bars down on it, or try to approach it a certain way. Um, the reason uh, Salig DSer sounds really good on my voice and um, just the different tools I'm learning how to use just makes more sense to do it in Reason than FL Studio. And um, and if I can get it at a maxed out quality, um, I might take it serious and kind of distribute it, be one of my first things I distribute this year um, if I can get permission from Yish to do so, if indeed that's him. Um, and then we can split that and go from there. But um, yeah, I'm MG the Future. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to any mixing. <laughs> but if you want me to do a mixing video, maybe I'll do a, a different mixing video. I just don't think I can. This track is something else going on here that kind of is blocking me from doing it. Um, in fact, this is the second time I try to record this video. Um, the first time something happened. I got distracted. Something interrupted me, and I was like. Oh, it's one of those days. And those are the days I normally do discussion videos. So, voila. But yeah, comments, questions, or concerns, definitely let me know. Um, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials for the week, let me know. The Machine Masters video for Wednesday I'll be doing um, tomorrow. Um, someone requested me to show them how to sample YouTube kind of thing. So I'm going to do a tutorial about that, Virtual DJ, the SP404 or sample track, set up my iPad to record that so you guys can see that. So I know I'm going to do that tomorrow, but I'm drawing blanks for the rest of the week, so I really don't know. But I'll check out the feedback on this video and see which direction to go. But anyway, hopefully you guys are enjoying your new year so far. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your time. Until next time, peace.